Hey friends, oh, what's cooking? Everybody doing good? I sure hope so. So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're not doing the amount of volume with my TLC brand that you see us doing with the Icon brand. Reality is, is Icon is better staffed, has more engineered processes versus the TLC stuff is really one-off every time, even though we'll repeat FJ40s or 55s or 60s, 62s, 80s, you name it. There's so many deviations in the condition and in the configurations that the clients want that uh, it's just much harder to scale it. And I think more than that, you know, COVID really put our hurting on TLC more than it did Icon. So most notably because our wonderful manager who's been with me, gosh, over 25 years, um, is an older gentleman and he decided to retire at the beginning of COVID to go take care of his wife and uh, make sure his own health was protected. So anyway, that's why you don't see as much TLC content as I wish you were seeing, but we have a couple different plans on how we're going to address that. In the meantime, today we are in a 1989 FJ62. This is highly modified and restored and it's what we call our famous 142. Why would you call it an FJ142, you might ask? Well, for those of you that do not know, is that is because it is an FZJ80 plus an FJ62. So when we do that, the ladder frame of the 80 series is much stronger and much more stable. You get coil suspension all the way around. You get four wheel disc brakes. You get a full floating rear axle and you just sway bars and stronger steering box that's a little bit more precise in its feedback. And it's just a killer equation. So you get you know ABS and all those suspension benefits and then you still can keep the classic boxy 62 series body. So it takes a wee bit of time. Obviously it takes two trucks. So it's certainly not the most cost effective approach, but it is definitely the one that has the most like revolutionary impact on the way the vehicle feels when everything's said and done. So powertrain on it uh, is LS3 General Motors E-Rod aluminum fuel injected V8. So it's about 420 horse, nice fat torque curve tons of horsepower, more fuel efficient than the anemic stock motor while delivering virtually triple the horsepower and double the torque. Hard to complain with that. And it's lighter weight by a couple hundred pounds. Um, that is sending power through to a modified General Motors 4L65E automatic transmission, which is then mated to the full-time four-wheel drive two-speed FZJ80 transfer case which we fully rebuild whilst it is a part drive shafts are custom axles are completely rebuilt down to the raw housings which get powder coated then we upgrade all the rubber lines to stainless and we upgrade the rotors and then the calipers and the bearings and the knuckles and the burr fields and everything else are all OEM and fully restored components suspension is a combination of ARB old man emu components married with a couple goodies from Slee off-road and then the Fox racing shocks really nice and smooth great articulation nice stance works out well we have the cosmetic design of this truck thematically very under the radar very stealth very stock this lovely blue color is a stock blue for this series truck. The interior stayed in the same gray color group. It features many, probably the last of the remaining factory interior trim components. So things like the door cups behind the door handles, the uh, dash pad, all the dash plastics are all new OEM. Then for the seats, we got rid of the factory front seats, which kind of suck, and we use the Icon seats, which are more comfortable, and in the same time, we modify the seat tracks to give you more floor track room, because you're really kind of limited 
um, on the leg travel in the stock setup. We use the Icon Sport pedals just because, well, they're cool and why not? And then we use the Icon Popular Chilowich textile married to a graphite marine rated vinyl. The headliner is closer to the original you would have found on the earlier FJ60 model 1985 and back. And meaning it's a vinyl so you can just like 409 simple green fantastic whatever wipe it down and party it on whereas the later 86 through 90 60 62 headliners were like a velour and they kind of sucked and they just collect dust get dirty there's really no way to clean them beyond a vacuum cleaner or winging a prayer another thing that we did on this truck that we did not used to do because we didn't used to have to do is the electrical system so the 60s and 62s, pretty much all the Land Cruisers, the electrical systems are beautifully engineered and built with very high quality components. Really the only complaint we've ever had is there's an odd little glitch that occurs with the 60 and 62s where suddenly out of nowhere, oil pressure dumps, gauges just go kind of nutty and then they're fine again, it's kind of weird. The other issue is the power windows after decades of use become painfully slow. Now usually that is your master control switch on the driver's door which is just barely still supported by Toyota. However, we're now realizing that the inbound power is a little bit low because of how Toyota, what circuit they shared and sourced that juice from. So what that means is nowadays with age you've got increased resistance we're actually having more problems with them so we finally got tired of it for a couple times we went ahead and we redid the power feed in um, but this time I don't know they're just getting to the age we decided with the clients full support to go ahead and re-harness the entire vehicle so that's good because we're able to use cross-link wire, solder all the connections, and basically create a stronger, longer lasting, better system. And at the same time, that gave us the control to redesign how that power window circuit is handled. So this truck has been completely reloomed from front to back, which is far from a small task, um, but it really is a nice thing to do. Um, Another thing that we did that we've been doing for many years, though, is all of the gauges are completely rebuilt and converted to electronically driven systems versus analog cable driven speedometer, for example. So when we did that on this truck, we decided to go ahead and address the tachometer and give it the full RPM spread that is relevant for the LS3 as opposed to the stock four banger. So we brought the rev line up to 6,400 and all that good stuff. We also rebuilt the odometer wheel, zeroed out the Odo and put the speedo up at 140. Might be a little ambitious, but higher speed capability than the stock one, which is a bonus. We did the Icon Sun visors, which are a direct bolt in for the 60 and 62 series and such a nice subtle but uh, really enhanced utility upgrade. Back seat's dead stock, this being an 89, that means it does feature three point proper modern seat belts and removable headrests. That seat tucks and tumbles beautifully, much better than any new vehicle that I know of, giving you a completely flat cargo floor area, which is large enough for two sleeping bags. So really nice for camping, works out good. We did the custom storage compartments in the tailgate and that creates yet more utility and cargo space in what would have otherwise been dead space. Um, we tried out a couple new things on this truck as well, such as we've been getting a lot of requests for the Icon Stainless Steel Super Nifty Center Console. They really don't fit into the 60 and 62 series that well because of the location of the factory parking brake. So this is actually the first physical after like umpteen 3D printed and cardboard prototypes, but the first physical prototype of that console. So please let me know what you think of it. Pretty expensive to make, but I think they're worth it. People dig it. You've got a removable cup holder in the front for two cup holders. You have a quick access area for like your phone and wallet and junk. 
then you have an exterior plane that you could, as we did in the case of this truck, add things like your ARB compressor and locking differential actuator switches, seat heater switches, and then of course the padded deck flush lock, gas shock, LED interior lighting, LED back end lighting, and uh, it's powder coated stainless steel. So it worked out really nice, we're happy with it. We did a custom perch for it and we're gonna develop those perches potentially for the 40 series different generations and other classic models. Um, back to this truck specifically, as I briefly mentioned, we do have the carbon fiber three-stage seat heaters and the carpet is a dense pile cut loop marine rated carpet. There are copious like boxes and boxes and boxes of dynamat in this truck. So as you can see in these process photos, the headliner, the doors, the quarters, the floors, the firewall, extensively coated in sound deadener before insulation and carpet and final panels and all that good stuff. The doors are also sealed in uh, 3M strip caulk and plastic to control any water getting into the interior and warping the panels. The panels are in-house laser cut in a marine rated fiberboard versus the crappy pizza box cardboard that the originals were. All the whiskers are new. We deleted the exterior belt line trim chrome. Looks cool, but we really did that because unfortunately Toyota doesn't seem to really care about supporting the restoration market and they discontinued those buggers. Same with the rain gutter chrome, but kind of looks cool without it. And we did put one of the last remaining sets of the factory lower rocker chrome molding. And we also did side step, side impact, rock slider, combo three values in that one product. Those are powder coated. For the bumpers, we stayed very stock looking, but we did a monster stainless steel fuel tank with an in-tank sump section pump and baffles. That's approximately 42 gallon capacity, which meant we displaced the spare tire. Uh, not a problem. I had seen over the years non-USA Land Cruiser solutions for doing that, none of which are available nor were ever available for this model specifically. So this is uh, probably the third generation of that idea. So I developed this, it's braced behind the stock bumper and then it's uh, basically the, the spare is braced to the chassis, not to the body. And then um, it's fluted, uh, knurled shaft that's um, mounted and then the carrier sleeves on top of that. So it's really nice and solid. It locks open at 90 degrees, then you pull the push pin just like you do on the Icon Design bumper systems to close it. We updated the headlights to LED. We updated the audio system to the Pioneer NEX head unit system that we've been using a lot. We did JL audio speakers because uh, fit tip, they fit really well in 66.2, especially the front doors. Uh, they're also in the back in the cargo. Hidden amp and bass. Bluetooth audio, um, CarPlay, Nav, all that stuff. As I mentioned before, we did keep the ABS circuit, which is lovely. We added a little indicator light that'll go on when you have a system problem with your ABS or when they're actually at work. It's on the dash there on the bottom left. Brand new OEM, last set virtually. Very expensive, hard to get powered stock rear view mirrors on the exterior, all new grill plastics and emblems and yada, yada, yada. What else? I mean, there's just so much because this is a stage three. So, I mean, this is down to the raw chassis and back up again. So like the chassis is um, zinc primer powder coated and then top coat black finish powder coat as are the axles. All new steering arms and ends, rebuilt steering box. Obviously with the E-Rod engine comes, you know, all new charging, ignition, cooling, exhaust, starting, you know, so all of those accessories, power steering pump are new. Um, gosh, I should probably just shut up because it just never ends. There's so much going on. Oh yeah, we also polyurea coated the underside of the body. And that's good enough. 
There's a couple other videos of the previous 142s or the occasional 140, which is a 60 on 80 that we've built in the past, which you can find on our channel. So, any further questions? Old school website, tlc4x4.com. Old school telephone, 818-280-3330. And uh, I don't really keep up too much with the um, Instagram or Facebook TLC, but I do like to show off all of the TLC content when we have it on the normal TLC, or rather on the normal icon feeds. So that's it. Thanks, guys. Be well. Stay healthy. See you on the next one.